Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today is uh, it's a cabin update, folks. Cabin sawmilling update. I thought I would uh, kind of show you what I got going on over here and talk a little bit about my winter preparation for winter milling at the cabin. I, I do see a lot of questions uh, on social media about cold weather milling, um, you know, what do you do? How do you do it? What lubrications do you use? All that kind of stuff. So first of all, this one inch duct, I can drop a link down in the description below. This is one inch split duct and it actually fits right over the sawmill rail. And that prevents that top rail from developing much in the way of rust. Now the chain, I don't actually cover nor the bottom rail. My thought on the bottom rail is water drips off of it. If it's oiled up really good, it, it seems to do just fine. Same with the chain, it'll build up some snow and even ice, but it tends to melt off during the day and I have it oiled up really good with ATF. Now, Woodmiser recommends the use of ATF for lubricating your rails, your chain, lubricating your upright rails up there and that chain as well as the guide arm. And that's what I've been using since I had my first mill in 2011 and since I got this mill in 2016. And it, it actually works really well. I guess it doesn't collect dust, has a lot of detergents. Now I will tell you, if you don't cover that top rail, it will get rusty. So just note that I had to learn to cover that rail. Now, and I will also tell you that there's another way to cover it. This is really easy, it's simple, you don't have to do a whole lot of work. You buy the tube, you cut it, you put it on, you're done. But Steve over at MSD Making Sawdust actually used, I think it's one inch PVC pipe that he cut on a table saw. So he cut a notch out of it so that he could snap it over that rail. And that actually sounds like it would work good and it would last longer. This stuff here breaks down after a few years and you gotta replace it. It's pretty inexpensive, but it does work. And I'll drop a link for you in the uh, description below on where I got that as well as to Steve's video on how he prepared his mill for the winter. But this does work pretty well, folks. Obviously, I cover the control box with the Woodmiser control box cover. It works really well. And you can see the blue in the five gallon jug here. That is pure windshield washer fluid with pine saw and dish liquid. And it's not gonna freeze, right? It's gotta be down about 20 plus below zero in order to freeze. So that's fine. You know, I cover that rail there on the guide arm with ATF and I slide it up underneath the mill. So that tends to keep it a little drier. That works fine. I don't cover the engine. It lives outside. Some say you should. Well, so far I've managed to do that. And then the last thing that I've done, and I can drop a link to this as well, is I bought this battery maintainer. Right now it's only temporary. And my plan is to actually mount it up on the umbrella stand so that you can, you can, you know, I can mount it on the umbrella stand and it can just stay there and be permanently mounted. The only thing is it tells you not to have it connected when the mill is running. So you've got to disconnect it down there or put a switch in it or something so that you can disconnect it. And I'll have to figure that out. But I have had trouble with the batteries dying. They don't last forever anyway. And so all I'm doing is I just put the battery cover over it like a bit of a tent and the whole mill heads over it anyway and connect it up and then the sun will burn off the snow that's on there and it will provide a charge on the battery and that works really well. And honestly folks, that's all I do. And this mill lives outside 100% of the time. It's well lubed, well greased. I protect the top rail, I protect the control box. That's about all you gotta do. So <laughs> for winter milling, this is it folks. You might need a shovel to get the snow out of the way, but it's no problem to do that. It works fine. I do put some ATF on my hydraulic stuff and just try to protect it. So we're pretty well set up. I did take about half of the stack of two by fours and load those in the truck. So as you can see, <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't supposed to snow today, folks. This was not the plan. But, uh, you know, I think being a weatherman is the only job you can have where you can be wrong 50% of the time and keep your job. Some tell me that's not fair. I don't know, folks. I mean, maybe it's a science that I don't understand fully, but boy, it sure seems like they can't uh, predict the weather very well. But they want you to believe they can predict it 100 years from now. I'm not convinced. All right, well, I had these game cameras set up, and I don't know if there's still battery power there. Oh yeah, I still got battery power. 
And I had some of these set up on video setting so that I could get video. So I'm hoping that some of these got some video of some interesting critters. We'll find out. I did change them a little bit too. So the one that's over here, I lowered that one down because you know, when the coyotes and things come through here, or cats or whatever, they're a lot lower to the ground. Well, it did look like I could see a print over there, but I can't. Usually it's kind of nice when it's like this out because you get to see the prints. I'll also tell you, I brought my chains from my truck. I don't, I hope I don't need them, but I did bring them. Oh, let's see what we got here. It's always fun doing this in the wintertime because of course, you know, get snow and whatever else on there and there we go. Okay, two more to go. This is generally my routine on the last day out here. Um, sometimes I do it when I first arrive. But I like to do it on the last day because it's kind of fun to go through who and what came cruising through here. All right. Trying to avoid getting dripped on here. This one I think was just set on pictures. Oh, of course, this will have a lot of video of us <laughs> cruising around in here. All right. All right. So I mentioned this. I did end up cutting these two by fours, which were 12 and 16 feet long because I decided I would build the shop with eight foot walls and then stack four foot walls on top of those instead of try to building them as 12 footers. So I think this is gonna work fine. It is all pine and you know what? Pine isn't the greatest construction lumber, but it's not gonna be structural. It's just a filler wall so that I can put insulation on the wall and then you know hang things on the wall and that sort of thing so it doesn't need to be structural that's okay all right let's take a look over here real quick it's chilly out here it is actually close to 32 degrees i'm hoping that it uh, warms up a little bit more before we leave and things start to melt but uh that panel's definitely uh sloughing off some snow and that's why it's so steep and then you can see those ones up there, they're actually starting to slough the snow off as well. So we'll start gaining some solar production. But since it's uh, been all night and we haven't been producing any solar power, I'm gonna go run the generator one last time just so that uh, you know we get the batteries up a little bit before we leave. It's always better to do that. So we'll come out here and fire this guy up. And then while I'm at it, I'll come over here and I will check, see what my levels are here. Oh yeah, we're 67%, that's not too bad. The bear that was charging up the hill was right about here when I saw him. <laughs> I think I mentioned that in one of my videos. I was right here opening up the back room so I could turn up the water heater and uh, looked over and he was charging up the hill. So I just yelled at him. But it's always a good idea to keep an eye out when you're walking around out here. You never know when there might be uh, some unhappy critter that thinks you look like breakfast. I also noticed something else about this heater, which should start producing heat a little bit anyway. And that is that overnight, because I don't have a baffle in there, it was definitely reverse flowing. And so um, I put a, uh, a little thermometer down here to see what it's reading. And it's already down to 44 degrees. So because it's not producing heat, hot air rises and it goes right up that pipe right there, goes down to that heater and then comes in down here cooled. It's kind of like natural air conditioning and we don't want that. So I've got to come up with a way to either put a baffle in this side here, maybe change the way I've run it or do something down there so that um, that doesn't happen. Otherwise the porch actually stayed to about 60 degrees overnight. It was doing really well, but this morning I could tell it was starting to get a cold breeze coming in. Not good. So anyway, I'm gonna check these game cameras, see what we got.
Well, folks, I've put the RV antifreeze down the sink and uh, done the dishes. Dar still like that. I need to pack up the garbage still. But I gotta go shut the generator off. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And while I do that, let me know what you think of those game camera pictures. I thought some of them were pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Listen, folks, I gotta get on the road. Y'all have a great day. It was a wonderful weekend at the cabin. I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. The old jarhead out.